Welcome to this week's episode of Faster Masters Rowing Radio. Grab a seat at the table as Masters Rowing coaches Marlene Royal and Rebecca Caro share their biggest secrets on how to unleash your hidden potential and plot a new course for real results on the water and off. Now, on to the show. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Faster Masters Rowing Radio. I'm Rebecca Caro, and today we're going to be talking about resistance training. What is it, whether it can benefit you, and how to do it. But first, I want to remind everybody that if you're on our newsletter, you will have received an email this past week offering you a January discount coupon. The coupon applies to our annual plan, which is a month by month workout, strength training, technique, performance, rowing lifestyle uh, program that has new content every single month. You can get it from the link on the screen, which or search for fastermastersrowing.com forward slash join. You will find the link there. The discount coupon gives you over 21% off, which is $100, compared with buying the program monthly. So it's an additional discount over and above the fact that the annual program is cheaper than if you buy it month month by month. The coupon code is NEWME2024, and you apply that at the checkout, and it expires at the end of January. Now... Resistance training. This is one part of rowing that I know some people absolutely loathe. They don't want to get into the gym. They don't want to be throwing heavy weights around. There are perceptions about what it will do to your physique and whether or not you need it. Firstly, I'm going to set the record straight. Masters rowers need resistance training. We need to build our strength. We need to keep up our bone density. And as we get older, we already know that we lose strength. Improving the strength and your muscles ability to lift load is one thing that every single one of us can do in order to stay as healthy and fit and active as we want to as we age. But you don't have to go into the gym. Now, one of the challenges of a gym program is that you're training for rowing, but you're doing the training not in a rowing boat. Self-evidently, some of the sort of lifts that you can do in a gym are really going to help because they're very similar to rowing. For example, a seated arm draw. You are going to be doing pretty much exactly the same movement As you sit in the boat, extend your arms and draw a loaded weight or the handle of a rowing or sculling boat towards you. Others, like squats and uh, cleans or deadlifts, are more and less aligned with what we're doing in the rowing boat. And so today I want to suggest that maybe you should be doing your weights on the water. The benefit of this is specificity. Great word. It basically means you're aligning your training with the sport that you want to use it in. And that, of course, sounds really obvious. And it is up to a point. When you're in the boat, moving a loaded oar comes with all of the challenges that you have already every time you go rowing whether it's the fact that the boat's not balanced or that there's wind or waves or there's a stream on your water. All of these mean that it can change the impact. Plus, we all know that our boats are set up with our oars to present a specific gearing so that we don't overload ourselves. And yet, here I am saying that you should be doing loaded, heavier strokes on the water. Let's roll back to a little bit more about the benefits of resistance training. When I was younger, we used to do weight training 
every single week in the gym. And one of the things that I observed was that each year I could load more weight onto a bar and lift it or press it or pull it. Years ago, I had the benefit of being coached by Mike Spracklin, who's an extremely famous British coach at the time. He was coaching Steve Redgrave in his single skull. And he made this observation. Every year, Steve does weights in the gym. And each year, he improves the amount that he can lift. And then he gets on the water for the racing season and he finds it hard to keep up with the weights and the amount of strength that he can lift at the beginning of the next season is less. Are weights worthwhile? Now, Mike Spracken was a great coach for asking questions and not necessarily giving you the answer that he really thought. It's clear to me from that anecdote that strength training was a useful thing to do, particularly through the winter months when they're slightly less on water training, but that as you move through your rowing year and you come into the racing season, you're going to be doing more on the water and somewhat less in the gym. And this is definitely one of those things that is a swings and roundabouts. If you didn't do the weights training, you wouldn't gain the strength and therefore you'd probably be compromising your ability to race hard on the water in the summer months. So I believe that we should all be doing some form of resistance training. Now, nowadays, it's not called strength training. It's called strength and conditioning. And it includes a large amount of componentry related to core con strength. So things that build up the small muscles in your body, not just lifting weights. I will say I am not an expert in strength and conditioning. And there are plenty of really good people out there who can give you detailed advice and plans, such as the ones that we have in Faster Masters, which I do not write myself. But the thing that I think is most beneficial for masters and why we should be doing resistance training is that it helps us to learn how to recruit more muscles into our rowing stroke. Now, rowing is a pushing sport, as we know. We start by pushing on our legs, then we swing the back and we draw the arms. One of the things that is really hard to learn and very hard to teach is the overlap between each of those three body parts. When your legs are finishing and your body is starting, and when your body is finishing and your arms are starting. When you are loaded up and you are pushing greater resistance than normal, one of the things your body will try and do, assuming you're trying hard and you have strong endeavor in this, is it'll try and recruit more muscles to doing the movement. And when I'm watching Masters Row, one thing that I see in common right across the board is that very few Masters are very active in their backswing. They often have really good leg drive, really good arm draw, but the backswing is deficient. You can check this for yourself. Go and look at a video of good rowing technique and then compare a video of yourself rowing low rate, firm pressure. And have a look at the arc through which you move your back. Have a look at whether or not when your back starts to swing, your knees continue to press downwards and your leg drive continues. So that's another thing that can often happen is that when people start a backswing, they forget and let their legs stay slightly bent and their legs don't continue an active press. They will straighten, but they do it rather more passively. And look at the blend and overlap between those three body parts in your own rowing when compared with someone who is very skillful. What you're looking for is the arc through which your shoulders move from leaning forwards to leaning back. Remember that if you don't get body rock forwards on the recovery, you sure as hell won't be getting it when you're on the power phase to swing backwards. So that could be something that you might want to work on. And when you have a heavy load, it helps you to work out which muscles are working because they have to work a little harder. You can practice this on the erg. Jack the fan resistance up to 10. 
and row at a low rate. It's a really easy way to make your movements more mindful. You can tell what is happening when you start to press your legs as you swing your back and when you draw your arms. Now, I want to suggest that we sh part of our resistance training should be done in the boat. This is back to our specificity. And I really like the fact that when you're in the boat, you are going through the exact rowing or sculling motion, which is what you are training for. And so by loading yourself up, you can then do that exact correct mo movement in the way that you want. Let's talk about how you would do your resistance training in a boat. The first thing that I like is for people to do it at reasonably low rates. By moving slowly and with thought, you can be more deliberate and you can check your movements while you're doing each stroke. If you can do it at rate 16 to 20, that's really good. If you can't, don't worry, do it at 24, don't do it at 30. It's too hard, particularly if you don't have good blade work skills and you can't place the blade in the water before you push. So first thing is lowering, lowering the rate. The second thing, of course, is increasing the resistance. There are a couple of ways that you can do this. One is by, if you're in a crew boat, having half the crew sit out so that you are carrying their dead weight, their mass, along with the water as you row. So you might have half the crew rowing low rate, and then on an agreed stroke, you switch and the other half sit out, and the ones who've been sitting out join in and start to do the power strokes. That's a really easy way to do resistance training. However, a big word of caution, if you're not used to doing it, you are carrying a very large load when you have half of your crewmates sitting out. And be very cautious about not overstressing yourself and overdoing it. If you're a well-trained athlete, you should be able to do that sort of work and build up from it. But I would be very cautious about people doing that if they are inexperienced for long periods of time. So the point is not to not do it, but it's about the number of strokes that you do while the other half of the crew is sitting easy. And I would suggest you start with no more than 20 strokes. Switch, let the other half do 20, switch again. And so you do it three times. You have three lots of 20 strokes on, 20 strokes off. And when you're sitting easy on the off, and then stop and have a break. Now, if you're a well-trained crew, you can totally build up to be doing 50, 60 strokes and repetition and many more sets of uh, power strokes than the, what I've just illustrated. But in all these things, come to it with uh, care and caution and build up gradually. I would recommend doing at least two, if not three, training sessions, including power strokes of 20 strokes each before you maybe go to 25 or 30 strokes or alternatively stay at 20 strokes and increase the number of repetitions. When you build it into your workouts, there are a couple of ways of doing that. I've suggested you do three sets of 20 to begin with. In between, paddle light, have a little bit of a rest, maybe do a bit of steady state, firm pressure um, rowing. So you might do your warm up, which will take you 10 or 15 minutes, then row 10 minutes of steady state, then do some power strokes, then have a minute or two rowing light or sitting easy and having a drink, a stretch, then do another 10 minutes of steady state rowing and another set of three lots of 20 power strokes and then warm down. So that would be a pretty full outing it would take you an hour to do now if you want to increase the amount of power strokes you're doing you can just increase the repetitions or reduce the amount of steady state rowing that you do in between that 
that's one way of doing your resistance training. Another way is increasing the gearing on the blades so you can change the oars that you use. We have sweep blades and sculling blades that are geared for men and for women. And so you could go and use blades that are more heavily geared than what you're used to. Another way of doing it is to have a bungee on your boat so that there is something under the hull that provides the resistance. Now, if you're in a single skull, this is a really great way of doing it because you can't have half the crew sitting out and taking a rest because you are the crew. Your bungee can be as simple as an elastic cord with, usually they have wire hooks on the end, and you can loop it around the hull and hook it onto itself, or you can hook it onto the side of the riggers if you have side-mounted riggers. And that small bit of elastic cord, or alternatively, a boat tie, we've all got boat ties lying around the boathouse, under the hull and tie it onto itself. Where you tie it matters, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that later on. But that small additional bit of fabric or elastic under your hull provides a really significant retarding factor on the forward motion of your boat. It's a very good way to add resistance without having to change the gearing on your oars and without having to change anything else in your boat setup. Plus, let me tell you, I've got a surprise at the end. I want to show you a video that I've got here of how to attach a bungee to your boat and how to make that bungee a greater resistance. Whoops, wrong one. Here we go. So putting a bungee on a boat is a way of increasing the resistance when we're training. I've got not an elastic bungee, but a boat tie here, but you can use an elastic bungee. What we're gonna do is put it underneath the hull so that it adds, reduces the smoothness of the hull. Once you've got it up, you can put it through the buckle and it doesn't need to be particularly tight but it does need to be secure. Now, you'll have noticed that I've got a wing rigger boat here. I've put it behind the rigger because you want to ensure that it doesn't slide off. Like if you had it here, it might slide off. So if you want, you could put it through the rigger just so that you know if you did it up like this, you know that it won't go anywhere. If you've got an elastic bungee, you can do it Sometimes they have wire hooks on the end, so you can loop it around and just hook it onto itself, or maybe hook it onto the back stays. You do need to be able to reach it because part of the workout is taking the bungee off before you do the final 10 minutes of the workout. So if you put it way down there, you won't be able to reach it. Now, later on next month, we're going to advance the amount of resistance. And the way to do that is to put a twist like that in the strap before you tie it on so that under the hull it actually is twisted it's not lying flat against the hull if you want more resistance than that you can get a bit of garden hose and thread this through the hose so that you've got a short bit that's about about the width of your boat and that will add significantly more resistance. I wouldn't counsel doing that until you're used to doing these sorts of workouts and you feel how much harder the load is when you add a hose, when you add a twist. But a twist is your first increase to begin with. Definitely just start with the sitting flat against the hull. Enjoy. So, Different ways of adding load to a single skull. One of the best bits of uh, load bearing workout is the end. And what I counsel you do at the end, if you're using a bungee as part of your resistance, is to take it off after you've done the final set of power strokes and then row your last bit of steady state 
firm without the bungee. And you just feel like you are flying because what you're doing is your learned pattern of movement of resistance training then gets put into your normal sculling stroke where you're not, you've got a smooth hull and you're not resistant. And that additional work that you're doing in order to overcome the resistance then goes into your normal pattern of rowing. A, it's a wonderful feeling, but B, it allows you to see immediately if you've got a speed coach or an app and it shows you your boat speed to actually see how you are putting that into practice. Remember, you're going to be a little tired at the end of the outing. So don't expect to be sitting there with amazing numbers compared with a normal steady state outing. But it is a really worthwhile thing to do. Now, we've got some uh, people who are watching live. And here's a little bit of insight uh, from Chris, who says, I find that after a resistance band or bungee training session, the biggest impact is on my technique. I have got some ideas why, but we're just going to finish off what he says. He says his best sessions are at 60 minutes with the band on, mostly steady at 16 to 18 with a few sets of power strokes and then the last 10 minutes home are the best. So yes, the last minutes home are the best, Chris. And that is what I've just explained because you're beginning to use those additional recruited muscles and putting them into your normal stroke. But the biggest impact on your technique, the reason I think that comes about is because you are rowing slowly, slowly and deliberately with care. And that uh, slowing down your pattern of movement helps you to be a little more mindful with things, particularly the placement at the front end. And one of the things about having a bungee under your boat is it's slowing your hull down so that you get a, a, a slower boat speed. Your placement can therefore be more accurate. And once your blades are under the water, you can really feel the load and move against them. And so those three small, tiny changes help you to be a little more accurate with your uh, blades and the blade and the work then you load up against the blades then goes directly into improving the boat speed. So there is real benefit in being uh, mindful and deliberate in your movements. And if you can slow the rate, rate down to 16, you know, you, you've got to have good boat skill to be able to do that, particularly in a single. Um, I think the fact that your boat slows down faster on the recovery because you've got a bungee underneath it means that it's actually not going so fast through the water. And then that additional load at the catch placement helps you to feel what you're doing better. You have an improved feeling. And then when you take the bungee off, hopefully you continue to row with that level of skill in that final 10 minutes before you end up back in the boathouse. So I hope that that's given you some, everyone, something to think about that will maybe introduce some new things in your own rowing and help you to incorporate resistance, load bearing, rowing into your workouts, even if you personally choose not to go to the gym. Till next time, bye-bye. We are part of the Rowing Chat Podcast Network. Please tell your rowing friends about the show. And if you've learned just one helpful thing from today's episode, please consider supporting the show for as little as $1 per month by visiting fastermastersrowing.com forward slash podcast.